It's no fun to find a cockroach in your cupboard, ants in your jam, or be eaten alive by mozzies. But not all insects have a bad rep, and not everyone wants them to go away. In fact, some people search for insects, and apparently going bush with a walking stick and an umbrella is a really good place to start. I didn't have any luck, but George Hudson did. From the age of only nine years old, he collected thousands of insects using tools like these. And his collection is perhaps the best private collection of insects in New Zealand. He claimed that he began his interest in insects, or collecting insects, at the age of 11 when he collected a dragonfly in London. He must have taken it home and done something with it, and maybe his father helped him, but that was the point that he identifies in his life as the beginning of, of that interest, which he followed till the day he died. When he was 14, he moved to New Zealand, and his mission by then was firmly established, and he followed it, and he arrived, of course, as a pioneer, basically, naturalist, in a country where nothing was known and he took it upon himself to record the insect life by collecting the specimens and putting them in this collection and writing books about them. He wrote his first book by the age of 19. He'd completed it with illustrations, but it took him about six years to get some government funding and some backing in order to actually print it and publish it. And this was before photography, so everything had to be hand-drawn? Absolutely. And that was his skill. I often see him more of an artist than a scientist. He would never call himself a scientist. He had some awful comments to make about scientists of the day. Hudson meticulously collected all kinds of insects. Some he killed in jars, others he kept alive in special breeding boxes. He had a particular interest in moths, butterflies and beetles. Most of the insects were destined for these impressive Cardi cabinets, especially designed for George's collection. What are your own memories of your, your grandfather? Well, both visiting his house for Sunday evening dinners and that sort of thing, and seeing his insect collection. He loved showing people what he had there, and he would always have recent things that he'd found and so on that he got excited about, put them out on the table and uh, entertain us. We went on field trips with him on Sundays or Saturdays out somewhere, or during the week, I guess, fine days anyway, um, and I distinctly remember those because he was all dressed up in a suit. In fact, he only had suits. He lived in his suit. So he had a waistcoat on and a jacket coat, pockets everywhere and jars and little pillboxes and things in his pockets. Yeah, fascinating for a kid to see this, this guy at work. George Hudson's collection continues to provide a wealth of information for researchers of New Zealand insects. But it wasn't the only thing he gave us. Hudson was a campaigner for what we now call daylight saving, and it was a great idea. More daylight meant more time in the bush with these. <laughs> 